Hello friends, my name is Marines and today I'll be talking about some of my most recent reads. First up is Ballad and Dagger by Danielle Jose Older. This is a YA fantasy that follows a community in Brooklyn that is populated by the displaced members of a fictional Caribbean island called San Madrigal, which sank. The evil that caused the sinking of San Madrigal comes back again, and our main character Mateo finds himself caught up in the struggle for power. I think the thing that this does best is definitely the narrative voice. There was something really genuine about the voice of Mateo as like a teenage boy and like his reactions to the like huge things that were happening to him also felt very genuine so I appreciated that. There were lines in here that were incredibly thoughtful especially as they pertain to diaspora communities and first and second generation children and spirituality and like the legacies of colonialism and Caribbean culture. Like there were were just so many thoughtful things and there were moments that I thought were really insightful and very funny. I love the world as well. I love the idea of having this diaspora community set in Brooklyn and infusing that with like music and magic. I think that the music especially is so vivid in the story. I will say for as much as I love the world, the world building sometimes was a little bit overly complicated to me. I felt like there were times that I was super confused about specific people and places and I just had to keep rolling with it because it felt like too much information and sometimes too all at once. I also thought that the pacing of this was a little bit interesting. I'm not sure if it was uneven because it felt pretty purposeful. We, like we would have these like huge things that would happen and then Mateo would kind of go back to normal life in a way that would slow things down again and then another huge thing would happen. So it was something that kind of threw me for a loop but it did feel purposeful. Overall I had a good time reading this. I would definitely continue reading on in the series and I gave this four out of five stars. Next I read Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is a TikTok book. <laughs> so it is a book that has gained a lot of popularity over on TikTok. It was kind of on my radar for that reason, but then my best friend Nicole read it and she was like, have you heard of this book? I think it's really interesting. You should read it. So that was kind of what sent me over the edge of finally picking up. I'm glad that I read it, but overall it was kind of a mixed experience for me. So first of all, Kawaguchi is a playwright and this book was written first as a play and then it became a book. But there are certain things in the telling of this that to me, still read very screenplay like. This is true in the way that he sets out scenes. There was an air of like setting every piece in its place like this person was here, this person was here, this person was here. Some of the dialogue also read a little bit stilted and for that I'm not sure if that is coming from the same place or if that is just an effect of like translation if that kind of stilted the flow of the dialogue and also there was a tendency to sort of over explain things in the story <laughs> which I should have told you first. So this is a story about like a coffee shop but if you sit in a specific table at this coffee shop you will have the ability to travel back in time. There are very specific rules about traveling back in time however like you need to be sitting at this table. You can only go back and see someone else who has been to the coffee shop. You can't change anything no matter what you do or say in the past when you come back the future is still the same. And so we hear about this premise in these rules over and over because this story is kind of composed of like four shorter stories within and so each time we meet a character who's going to travel they hear the rules again and so we as a reader also hear the rules sort of again and again and again. The first two stories felt more effective to me than the last two. The lesson that they took away from it when they got back was something that like maybe I didn't agree with in a way that that kind of undermined those stories for me personally. So the first two I think were just more effective overall. That all said, the premise of this is just really wonderful. I love books about grief and about processing grief. So I loved the idea that the entire reason that you would travel back in time this way, if you can't change anything, is that when you come back, you can change where you go from here, right? You can change your heart, you can change your mind, you can use it to sort of move on 
on and decide a new direction. So it really is like traveling back in time to process grief, which my jam, you know, what an excellent premise. So I love that. And there also was just something really earnest and warm about it and about the storytelling that, you know, just immediately kind of wrapped me up in the atmosphere and in the book itself. I read it so quickly. It is very short, but also I was just like gobbling it up. I can also really easily see why people rated it higher than I did. And I rated it 3.5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> I rated it three out of five stars on Goodreads. <laughs> um, uh, three or 3.5, I don't know. Maybe I'm still thinking about this, but it's certainly like in that range. Next, I read Osmo Unknown in the Eight Penny Woods by Catherine M. Valenti. Catherine M. Valenti is one of my favorite authors of all time. This is a middle grade fantasy about a young boy, Osmo, who lives in like a human town. And they have these stories, legends about fantastical creatures and like life beyond the woods that Osmo does not necessarily buy into, especially because his mother is a hunter who goes frequently into the woods and has never seen any evidence of this until one day Osmo's mother accidentally kills one of these mythical creatures and thus violates a treaty and so in payment for this violation Osmo has to go onto this like big adventure into the eight penny woods this to me has a lot a lot of the same ingredients of the fairyland series there is something about fairyland that i think is a little bit more whimsical at least in the like just sheer amount of places that we see and creatures that we meet however i think fairyland especially the first book has a stronger plot core like to me it was easier to follow along with like what exactly September was doing and why. This felt a little bit hazier to me. It still has that whimsy but the plot of it felt even hazier to me. So I feel like if you read Fairyland and that was kind of like on the edge of like whimsy that you can take, this might be just kind of over that edge just because the center of it is even squishier. I will also say that Fairyland takes off immediately like from the first page the green wood is there he's like want to go to fairyland and they take off this takes much longer to get going we get way more established in the town we get more of a sense for osmo and his life then we see the accident happen and it takes such a long while before he's even on an adventure so there was something pretty slow about the buildup of all of this it did start to come together for me maybe 75 pages in around there is when i was like oh like osmo has my whole heart he is precious and it was around that time that I realized that Osmo is basically going on a self-discovery journey with like loneliness and grumpiness <laughs> and everything about that dynamic was beautiful and I love seeing them come together as friends as always Valenti delivers with this super rich lush writing I just love her writing style so 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 much <laughs> I know it's not everybody's flavor but I just love I love it I love the descriptions I love like the little nuggets of wisdom and the quotable quotes and the description of the places and the people and all of that it is just delicious to me overall I gave this four out of five stars next I read now streaming by Isla Chandler I got this on Kindle Unlimited I would caution romance readers who like things that are a little less explicit it because while this isn't like full erotica it definitely leans heavier on sort of like the explicit scenes but the thing that I thought was like pretty well done was the balance between like the building of the plot and the characters and the romance and the sex scenes and all of that I thought it was pretty well done the characters themselves aren't like super complicated and nuanced but we got enough of each of them that I was like this is cute I shipped them together and then also the plot itself was well built for like the amount of time that we had in the story it didn't try to build something that was too big and too complicated and yet it gave us a plot and like emotional stakes that I was immediately invested in so I read this in one sitting I was entertained throughout it was a pretty clean manuscript and I'm always looking for like good Kindle unlimited romances I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars next I read Witchlings by Claribel A. Ortega this is another middle grade fantasy and this was sent to me by the publisher this is about a young witch 
And in her world, like you reach a certain age where you get sorted into different covens, but a witch who doesn't get sorted into a coven is called a spare. And seven to her consternation becomes a spare. And on top of all of that, when it's time to seal her powers with the other two spares in her coven, it doesn't work. And so they are at risk of like never coming into their powers and remaining witchlings forever. In order to avoid that, Seven says that they will do like the impossible task that they need to complete in order to seal their powers. And we watch them kind of go on that journey of trying to complete the impossible task. The thing that I really enjoy about Ortega's middle grades is that they are age appropriate, but they're never like condescending. They are enjoyable for adults as well, while still catering to their audience. And there's something about her writing and plotty that is deceptively simple. Like there is an ease there, a smoothness, a simplicity, but you can just tell that it takes so much skill to land every piece just so. I loved the characters in this. They were so wonderful. And all of the themes of like discovering who you are and making friends and all of that was just so thoughtful and beautiful and I love that this is like a Latinx inspired sort of magic system and all of those nods to Latinx and Dominican culture were just like I don't know they made me smile there were a couple of uh, spells and things that the names for them made me like laugh out loud giggle 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 <laughs> I loved it so much. Next I read Stormfront by Jim Butcher. <laughs> I specifically wanted a long running series that I could dive into because I'm caught up on In Death. I binged like pretty much the whole series this year and so it left kind of <laughs> a little bit of a hangover feeling where I was like I want another long series. And looking at a ton of best of urban fantasy lists, the Dresden Files came up over and over and over again. So I was like cool let's start this. Um, it was terrible. <laughs> I have a full standalone review of this if you want to hear all of the ways that it was. But aside from being full of misogyny and following like a chauvinistic pig of a main character, I just also wasn't impressed with like the plotting or the world building. And outside of our main character, there was like barely any characterization work done for anybody else. There were so many elements of this that were just flat and bland that the fact that it was also misogynistic on top of that, like I, I honestly don't know what I was supposed to walk away from this having enjoyed. I know that people say that it gets better. Four books into the freaking series is like the consensus there. But honestly, I don't know what I was supposed to see here that like would convince me to move on. I will tell you, I'm probably going to move on <laughs> because now uh, then so many people have said no no it gets better Harry gets better all of that stuff I'm like oh really and I kind of want to see for myself if that is true so I do plan on reading on at least until like I kind of tap out and cry mercy I hated every moment of Stormfront and I gave it one out of five stars next up Cats and Jammer by Francesca Zappia this was a YA fantasy. This book was so flippin' weird. Uh, first, I got a copy of this arc because I saw Francesca Zappia talking about how weird this book was on TikTok and just her description of it made me really want to read it. So I left a comment that was kind of like grabby hands and she reached out and offered to send me an arc, which was really incredibly kind of her. So of course I jumped at the chance. This book is gonna be incredibly polarizing for people and even just looking through the reviews that already exist, like I see that. So I think that the best thing that I can do with this review is sort of like prepare you or like give expectations to what exactly this book is. There is this high school where there are students trapped inside and half of the students that are trapped inside are transforming in ways, in physical ways that are really unexplained. So our main character, for instance, has a mask that like is cat shaped, but it's made of flesh and she doesn't have eyeballs, but she can see. Her best friend is turning into a cardboard box. So there are all of these really odd unexplained ways that like people are physically changing. The other half of the students who aren't changing have walled themselves off for fear of what is happening to the other students and that is like the situation that we are dropped in. The main character Kat cannot remember why she's trapped in this school and has no context really to who she was before and how she got here except for she starts to have flashbacks and like remember pieces of her life. So this is told in alternating chapters really short 
short snippets in which we get a flashback to Kat's previous life and then a moment in what's happening presently in the high school as students, specifically the students who have started to change, are also now starting to die. So Kat is trying to figure out why, who's killing them off, but also she's slowly remembering why she's trapped there in the first place. The best way I think that I can actually describe this book is like, you know, the first season of Buffy had that extended high school as hell metaphor and all of the baddies in that first season like really represented some facet of like high school or teenage life, but magnified, especially from this perspective of like high school being the worst. So that symbolic nature married with like the story and emotional core of a heart and a body in the world. If you mash those things together, you get this book. Now, the other thing is that there is a content warning as a spoiler thing going on here. I believe that content warnings aren't spoilers, but there is a content warning that shows up like in the last pages of this that basically explains the whole book, right? I feel like people need to know this going into the story, but I also feel like it will like materially change like how you go through the story if you already know what's going on. The other thing though is that I don't think it's particularly difficult to figure out. I had a suspicion the entire time and that feeling of like dread of figuring it out kept building and building. But if you are somebody who has particular triggers, I would recommend like kind of seeking out the spoilery one as well. I don't want anybody to go in here sort of unawares and be confronted with something that could be potentially very triggering. My feelings on this were so complicated because it really is a gut punch. This entire thing is just a gut punch and it leaves the ending in a way that is just like tragedy. There's nothing else to this end except for, yes, this is the tragedy you thought it was the entire time. It really got to me, especially because towards the end, I was like so attached to our main characters and seeing how far their relationship had come through being friends, like towards the end, I just, I had so much invested in them. And then the end is like, your heart is broken and that is that. And so I can see that being really polarizing for readers. I think this also just has a lot to say about like the dynamics that you find in high schools. And because this tackles a lot of like isolation and loneliness and bullying, I think it did have a lot to say about like bullying as a whole. And specifically through like a lens that I don't think I often see, and that is the way that it can be sort of cannibalistic to be somebody who is being bullied and not be able to help others for fear of it getting worse for you. And so the cycle that that perpetuates, especially in instances where Kat feels like she could have done a better thing, but didn't because it would have put her in more danger. The tragedy of that was just so keenly felt here. I got on pretty well with the short chapters as well. I think it created a really good momentum. I read this very quickly. And so I enjoyed that, but I can also see that being polarizing because it is very like staccato, right? Ultimately, I would recommend this if like that that mashing of things that I described like appeals to you. I said it was YA fantasy-ish before, but it is actually horror. There is that element of like body horror and we're trapped inside the school that is like changing. And so that is very atmospherically horror-ish as well. So if you are into horror, I feel like this might be something that you check out. But in general, if you can appreciate something that is atmospheric, that isn't super plot heavy, but is more about exploring like themes and characters and like moments in time that have led you here, this might be for you. Overall, I gave this four out of five stars and I have not stopped thinking about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one got me. I, I honestly don't know how, uh, you know, oh gosh, it really got under my skin. It really, really did. I needed a total reset after that. So next I read Wolf Gone Wild by Juliet Cross. This is a paranormal romance and it is about a werewolf who is cursed and unable to change and so he seeks the help of a witch to help him understand how he was hexed and like unhex him but this is a witch who her family especially like her older sister who is like the head witch in this town has told them that they are not allowed to associate with wolves. I got this recommendation from Crystal who was reading a later book in the series and talking about how much she enjoyed the series overall. I put it on my TBR right when I heard her talking about it but it wasn't until I 
finished Cats and Jammer that I just needed a total palette cleanse that I actually picked it up. So I'm super glad that I had it like on deck and I had a great time with this. There is something a little bit tongue in cheek about this because the entire setup of like him being unable to turn into his wolf means that we are like hearing his wolf, his inner wolf <laughs> talking to him throughout and his wolf is like, kill now, protect the woman, make her yours. Like it is this extreme almost personification of like the alpha wolf that you get as a trope in paranormal romances. So I thought it was really funny and it seemed really self-aware and almost like poking fun at the trope. And I thought as I started that that would be like indicative of like the tone of the rest of this, but actually it was like a really earnest paranormal romance. This is a romance that is slow burn. It is slowly building. So we actually get to see why these two people like fall in love with each other. I love a good slow burn, but it has a tendency to become repetitive. So we see a lot of the same sorts of like interactions and like thoughts of like, no, I can't be with her. I've got this problem and her being like, I can't be with him. My sister said no, like sort of over and over again. But overall, I did like the dynamic between them. And I did like that we got to see how they progress. It wasn't just insta lovey. Like you actually got to see them spending time together. I will definitely keep reading in the series about the other sisters. We've met, I think, a lot of their like leading men. And so those dynamics were pretty interesting. I love the sisters as a unit. We got a little piece of all of them. They do each like fit in their tropes or whatnot, but they were fun enough. There's a very like charmed vibe there with like the sister witches or whatnot. So I'm interested. <laughs> I found this tons of fun. This was was also on Kindle Unlimited. So another check for those of you always looking for something good on Kindle Unlimited. I gave this four out of five stars. Next, I read An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. I'm leading a book club every month where I pick a science fiction or fantasy book. And this is in partnership with Chirp Books. So every month Chirp Books highly discounts the audiobook for the book that I've picked for that book club. And then at the end of the month, they actually send out a survey to all of the participants of the book club and ask them specific questions about the, the book itself and the reading experience. They compile all of that data and they share it out with the readers as well. And I also use that to like do my end of the month wrap up. If you are interested in following along for next month, we're reading The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. So the information for the book club will be in the description. And also I started a discord. So you can join the discord even if you're not going to be reading along because it's just like a general place for community and to chat about books and movies and what we're playing and all of that jazz. But this will also be like the hub of the book club now. So it's a little bit easier to have conversations as we're reading, especially because I'm on YouTube, I'm on TikTok, I'm all over the place. <laughs> and this kind of centralizes the book club talk. So that is a thing. Discord link will also be in the description. But anyways, this month was An Unkindness of Ghosts and this was Wow, another reading experience that I was just uh, maybe a little unprepared for. I don't know why. I don't know why, because given the subject matter, I should have known it was coming. But there is something incredibly like graphic and bleak about the story. And it is a story that looks right in the face of violence and does not shy away. So the entire premise is that there is this space vessel that is organized like the antebellum South. And basically brown and black folk are, live in the lower decks and they are enslaved. And so we follow a main character who lives in the slum decks. Everything about the premise and the characterizations here were just so beautifully done, so well done. There was so much commentary here and so much honesty sort of in the portrayal of like the plantation like transposed on the space vessel that was just wonderful. I think the thing that got away from it a little bit was like the thread of the plot. It kind of felt a little all over the place. And so while I usually enjoy an open ending because that plot thread kind of got lost, the open ending here felt a little, I don't know, unsatisfying. Aster's characterization was beautiful and everything that we got to explore through Aster and through another main character, Theo, in terms of gender and sexuality and also neurodivergence, all of that was just so nuanced, so vulnerable, so beautiful. All of that was 
fantastic. This is a story that will also sit with me for a very long time. I gave this four out of five stars, maybe 4.5 out of five stars. It's just really difficult to sort of process in terms of like a star rating and enjoyment because it was such a tough read. Next, I read No Visible Bruises by Rachel Louise Snyder. This is actually a nonfiction book I was listening to on audiobook for a while and I finally finished it up this past month. It is all about domestic violence and I... I really appreciated the work that this book did. It was a very interesting style to me. It felt like a blend of sort of narrative nonfiction, but also it had um, like a reporter style, like a journalistic style. But there was also something a little like literary about it, especially in the way that Snyder sort of infused the like telling of this, the reporting of this with an additional layer of feeling and interpretation. So I feel like that is a strength and that might be why some people might not enjoy this. If you're looking for like straight reporting, this is not the thing. If you're looking for like straight narrative nonfiction, this is also not the thing because it does have those moments where it is just sort of reporting. So it's something of a blend in the middle that I personally really enjoyed. Even that bit that was sort of like that layer of interpretation and infusing of sort of a meaning and opinion I thought was well done specifically because this is a subject where a lot of it is like dehumanized I think I don't think that we often think about like the victims of domestic abuse and this is something that Snyder herself is exploring right that idea of like why does the victim stay so there is that dehumanizing aspect and I loved that in the reporting and the telling of this Snyder kind of brings it back to that human humanizing level. The information that I learned about domestic abuse was also just really impactful. I think understanding the breadth and width of it all, it is important to know and to process and to recognize, especially to recognize. And when I started this, I don't know that it was exactly pre like Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, but it was like pre the height of all of that. So like reading this in tandem with seeing that was <laughs> um, probably why I read it so slow definitely was a choice but I am glad that I did read this and it is something that I would definitely recommend to everybody especially as we see the shift of like public opinion in terms of like domestic abuse and domestic abuse victims so I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars and just the half star doc is a little bit about organization there were just a few times where I didn't follow sort of like the flow of information that she was telling and there were times that it felt like we were going back and forth and sort of the logic of what she was telling in a way that I felt could have been tightened or better organized but overall this was well crafted and finally I read The Near Witch by B.E. Schwab so I announced this over on my TikTok I don't think I was making content here at that time so you guys don't know but I am basically reading all of Victoria Schwab's V.E. Schwab's work and I want to like deep dive into their work specifically because I've had such mixed experiences of it and because I have this theory, this hypothesis that Schwab only writes not like other girls. And really, I also want to get to the bottom of why their work doesn't work for me, especially because so many people enjoy this work. And I just I can't I can't get on with it. Above all else, this book was so freaking boring. Oh my god, I, I don't know how I honestly forced my way through this. It isn't even like the most terrible thing that I've ever read, but it does point out to me that something that I struggle with V.E. Schwab books is that the beginning, the pacing of it is always like terrible of the ones that I have read so far. Uh, Addie LaRue, I almost DNF that book because the beginning is so slow, so freaking boring. Vicious also has a really, really slow beginning and A Darker Shade of Magic, we all know I thought the whole thing was like garbage so the pacing of their books is not great they don't know how to plot a story they don't know how to pace a story and that was absolutely true here in which we just spent pages upon pages upon pages just describing the same things over and over again. I am going to do a full and separate review sort of deep diving into this and like looking at the main character who is a girl talking through that and like my experience of the book overall but for the purposes of this wrap up we'll just say that I didn't love it <laughs> but it wasn't the worst thing I ever read. This is probably like a 1.5 or 2 out of 5 stars a promising start. That's it for me today. If you have read or would like to read any of the books that I've mentioned, let's chat down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. 
and this is I I I when I, this I I oh my gosh it took me so long to record this that like the sun has been in 27 different positions so <laughs> hooray natural light uh sorry about that also my camera died in the middle of this and I tried my best to like charge it without moving it so we'll see how successful I was there but also I kept charging it in small bursts like I just need a little bit more to finish and it wasn't ever a little bit more so it just kept dying and I kept trying again and oh my god look it's almost dying again bye